one who loves us, the one who saves us, and the one who spurs us ever on. Amen. Please be seated. As you can see, I am not Joe Hart. Joe has been out with the flu all week, and so he informed me on Friday that he, he didn't think he was going to be able to make it. But this does seem a time of year where people catch bugs and everybody's resistance is kind of down because it's so busy. And as we get closer to Christmas, for many of us, this time of year can be very difficult. Think about it. The manufactured happiness of the season that started in October. The promises of just the right gift to make our relationships better. Kay Jewelers and Jared with the perfect chocolate diamond that's going to save your marriage. But if we're struggling with any of the challenges that, bring, that life brings our way, or we can't rise to meet the expectations of holiday cheer that surround us, we can sometimes feel inadequate. And I think this week's scriptures, this question from John the Baptist, speak to that. Last Sunday's gospel brimmed over with John's confidence and his clear and compelling call for repentance. And yet, John's tune changes markedly from what we heard last week. Now he's sitting alone, dark, damp, and dank cell, and he questions his earlier confidence and perhaps his very mission and his identity. So what does he do? He sends a disciple to go and ask Jesus a very poignant, I think a heartbreaking question. Are you really the one who is to come? Should we look for another? So the movement from last week's reading to this one is both unexpected and I think a little confusing. Because in just seven days, we've jumped several chapters ahead in Matthew's gospel, months forward in the narrative, from anticipation to disappointment, from hope to desperation. From a sure and certain confidence to skepticism. And this move might be familiar to some of us. We regularly charge ahead with our dreams and plans, marching forward with optimism about the future, what's going to happen with our kids, what retirement might bring us, only to be arrested and caught up short whether by a serious illness, cancer, or loss of employment, the passing of a loved one, the death of a relationship, or any of a thousand other things that cause us suddenly to stumble and to lose our confidence, and maybe even question our faith. Which is why this passage may be just the thing that we need on this third Sunday in Advent, a day marked in some traditions with a candle of hope and joy. That's what we hear in the Magnificat that the choir sang so beautifully this morning. But John introduces a little bit of reality in our progress towards Bethlehem, which is simply that even while we anticipate and we prepare and we remember the birth of the Christ child. And we give thanks for that gift and believe that his death and resurrection promise new and eternal life. In the meantime, things can be difficult. And so a picture of John the Baptist sharing his doubts, it reassures me and reminds me that doubt isn't the opposite of faith. 
and that those who believe that the Christian life is one seamless march forward from success to success, or even from less faith to more, although that does happen, they may not have been paying attention because Christian faith is patterned on the biblical story of the life, suffering, the death, and ultimately resurrection of Jesus. God incarnate, God in human flesh, came not as the victorious conqueror that then, and I think maybe some of us wished he would be, but rather, Jesus, Matthew tells us, came as Emmanuel, God with us, the one who does not eliminate all our troubles, but accompanies us through them. The one who holds on to us when the world feels like it's falling apart. The one who enters into our suffering and struggle. And so reminds us that we are not alone. And the one who promises to bring us through all things, even and ultimately through death to new life. You know, John's gospel, the one often appointed as the reading for Christmas Day, isn't so different. John doesn't say that Jesus, the word made flesh in light of the world, vanquishes the darkness. But rather, he says, Jesus shines on in the midst of it. And the darkness can neither comprehend nor conquer such light. And so on this third Sunday of Advent, we stand with Christians of all times and ages waiting between the first advent of Jesus in the flesh of a human vulnerable infant and his second advent in glory that's yet to come that will heal all hurts, right all wrongs, wipe every tear from the eye and bring peace to the nations. But waiting, waiting can be hard particularly when we have the collision of the festive and joyful nature of the season, as it should be. Then the experience of personal loss or fear that is painful for some of us. So whatever space you find yourself in this Christmas season, know that your joy is appropriate but also, you're not unfaithful if you have doubt or grief. Because even someone as bold as John the Baptist had his own doubts. And when I find myself in that place, I try to remember, and although I'm not always successful, that the God that I know in Jesus, Emmanuel, not only understands my pain and your pain, my loss and your loss, but this same God with us accompanies us during those times so we can wait and prepare and hope because we believe Christ is coming to bring healing justice, peace. And that hope allows us to act now to make our church, to make our community, our country, and our world more healthy, more peaceful, more just, and more helpful. And because of his promise to come again, we can work now for this kind of world that we desire and that we believe God desires us to inhabit, knowing that whatever setbacks or disappointments we experience, they are temporary. And so John the Baptist's question to Jesus, hopefully we begin to realize, isn't simply a question, but it's also a plea, a plea for understanding and assurance. And similarly, Jesus' answer to John is the same one to us, to look at his deeds of mercy as a word of hope and a call to action 
a call not to John, but to each and every one of us. A call that reminds us of God's promises of healing and peace. A call of hope that empowers us to work for them in the meantime as we wait. So today, bring your deep concerns and prayers for healing. Bring them to the cross. Bring your prayers for comfort and peace and justice to the cross. Confident that the God of hope is going to answer those prayers in part through us as we go from here to work and struggle and love and care for one another. And though hope may sometimes seem like a luxury, frivolous and groundless, it's precisely the opposite. Hope, friends, is elemental. It's made of some of the strongest stuff in the universe. Hope endures. And it doesn't depend on our mood, our disposition, or our desire. And it doesn't wait until we're ready for it or until we've prepared ourselves for its arrival. And hope doesn't hold itself apart from us until we have worked through the worst of our sorrow, our anger, or our fear. In fact, this is precisely where hope seeks us out, standing with us in the midst of what weighs us down the most. So, dear ones, each and every one of you have a ray of hope. Hope for God's future. And I am so grateful for the many ways that you give of yourselves and the care of your families, your neighbors, your co-workers, our children, this community. And for the remainder of Advent and Christmas season and in the coming year, hope has work for us to do together. It asks us to resist going numb when the world within us or beyond us seems to be falling apart. Hope asks us to love each other and see the best rather than assume the worst. Hope asks us to look beyond our personal ideologies and politics and see the humanity and belovedness of every human being. Every human being. And in the height of despair, in the deepest darkness, hope calls us to open our hearts, our eyes, and our hands that we might engage the world, especially when it breaks our hearts. Brothers and sister, hope goes with us step by step, providing the sustenance we most need. And because God has promised to take care of the future, we can have hope that the present is eternally open and full of possibility.